So we're going to embark on a journey into the mysterious and exciting world of plastic surgery. And I'm going to take you through it based on some pictures of my patients. Sneha, she's Sneha. She was just two days old baby when I saw her for the first time. A bundle of joy for the entire family, but as much a bundle of concern for her parents. She had hemangioma, or a tumor of blood vessel, on the lower lip. Now, majority of such tumors resolve by themselves by the age of five or six years. And hence, I simply reassured the parents. I asked them to avoid any kind of a trauma, and that's about it. Yet when she was around four or five months old, somebody in the family suggested application of some herbal medication, which they did caused a wound or ulceration, and it suddenly started profusely bleeding one night. She was rushed to a couple of nearby hospitals where they were told the hospitals did not have the facility to save the child. And that's when they rushed to my hospital at something like two or three in the morning. I had to perform emergency laser vascular plastic surgery, and with God's grace, we could save the child. Vinayak was a very active boy till the age of 13 years. Over a year or so, he had become extremely reclusive. He would shut himself in a room, would hesitate to mix with anybody. His performance in the school also had drastically dropped. Parents thought it was a part of growing up process. When he had gone in the vacation to his mama's or maternal uncle's place, that's when his mother thought of clearing his cupboard. And when she opened the cupboard, she was surprised to find eight or 10 neckties. Now, Vinayak never wore a necktie, nor was it a part of his school uniform. And all the ties looked used and crumpled. She was really surprised. When he returned, she asked him about it. And that's when, poor him, he broke down and started crying. He was suffering from gynecomastia, or abnormal enlargement of breast tissue in a boy or a male. He used to tightly wrap his chest with those neckties before putting on a t-shirt or a shirt and going out. A simple surgery under local anesthesia, which took about an hour or so, could fix the problem for him. Plastic surgery can really touch and transform lives in many ways. And yet, there are a lot of misconceptions about this surgery. My earlier speaker said plastics are not good. Don't worry. We do not attach any plastic to our body. The word plastic surgery is derived from plastic cause, which means to mold. Plastic surgeon is an expert surgeon who can mold the body tissues in such a way that they function better and look good. Mind you, function always takes precedence over looks. For example, this hand with two and a half fingers was devoid of any function. So the remnant of the middle finger had transferred to the place of the thumb, and it became functional again. If you ask me, this hand is beautiful because it's earning bread and butter and supporting a family of eight members. There were three main reasons why I chose plastic surgery for super speciality after my master's in surgery. First and foremost, our motherland, India or Bharat, is the birthplace of plastic surgery. Ancient surgeon Sushruta, in his masterly treatise, Sushrut Samhita, has mentioned the first details of plastic surgery. And notably, the principles which he laid down back then and the instruments which he designed for the surgery back then hold good even today. Second important reason was plastic surgery has evolved as a troubleshooter specialty for all other specialties. Any surgical problem thought to be difficult to treat by other specialties was accepted by plastic surgeons as a challenge. This is the only branch of surgery where we operate on all the organ systems. We operate on bones, muscles, tendons, arteries, veins, lymphatics, nerves, skin, hair, nails, you name it, and we do that. This is the only system, uh, surgical system which operates on all the age groups. We operate on children for fixing their birth defects. We also operate on elderly people for anti-aging procedures. And this is the only specialty of surgery which operates on all sexes, both male and female, and so also on transgenders or genital reassignment surgeries. Plastic surgery 
is as much an art as a medical science. A good plastic surgeon ought to be a good carpenter. He should be able to fix bowls. He ought to be a good plumber. We should be able to join arteries to establish the blood flow and join veins to establish venous drainage. You ought to be a good tailor for those nips and tucks and masterly suturing in order to minimize or avoid the scar. He ought to be a good sculptor for body aesthetic procedures like liposuctions, tummy tucks, breast surgery, or the nose job. Plastic surgery transforms lives through a number of its subspecialities, a very well-known of which is burns and victims of acid burns. The objective is not only to save a life, but to minimize scarring, avoid or correct the deformities, and make sure the person is restored back to the society as a productive member. Another big disfiguring problem can be cancer. This patient developed cancer of the lower lip thanks to smoking of a habit of smoking. The entire lower lip had to be excised and had to be reconstructed using plastic surgery. We operate on children to correct their birth defects, especially over the face, extremities, or genitals. Gender reassignment surgery is definitely on the rise. A feeling of male trapped in a female body, or vice versa, can be really difficult. Fortunately, society is really opening up to their problems, and plastic surgery can truly liberate such people. Maxillofacial surgery involves surgery over the jaws and the face, and the microvascular surgery involves joining those minute blood vessels and nerves under microscope in order to join the parts back to the body, and not only that, but to try and make it functional once again. And the last, of course, is cosmetic surgery, which everybody's heard of, most have desired, and yet it is the least understood part of plastic surgery. Rena was, uh, Rena has surgery is not only to improve the looks, but to improve or cure the inferiority complexes associated with those bodily deformities. Thus, plastic surgery can truly transform lives, and yet there are certain red flags which I would like to raise here for the benefit of you all. The first and foremost is body dysmorphic disorders. This is a psychological disorder where mind imagines some bodily defect where there is none, or there could be a minor bodily defect, but the perception in the mind is disproportionately high. A plastic surgeon really needs to diagnose these patients carefully, not subject them to a surgery, and instead to counsel them properly. Advertisements. Remember, advertisements, the sole objective is to sell the product and not to solve your problem. So please do not experiment on your body based on some advertisements. A word of advice to the young crowd here, if you perceive any body defect or some problem which you feel needs to be addressed or corrected, please do not shy away from it. Be open about it. Discuss it with your parents, guardians. You will need their support system during the treatment or the recovery period. And a word of advice for the parents as well. If your child or what comes up to you and mentions some problem like this, please do not be dismissive about it. Give a patient listening. Try to understand the child's psychology, and if need be, take an expert opinion. When you take an expert opinion, make sure that the person you're consulting is a properly qualified doctor. Unfortunately, there is tremendous commer commercialization of this beauty business, and not everybody who wears a white apron be a doctor. A couple of very important pointers. Be realistic about your expectations. Seek improvement and not perfection. Our body is never perfect. So seek improvement. And most important, be thankful what can be achieved. And do not cry for what can be achieved.